Hey guys, my name is Nicolette Mashile. I'm also known as The Financial Bunny. Today I'm carrying on with the series under What Is Your Move? This is a book I published back in 2020 during the COVID pandemic. But I'm hoping that those who have read it, it has really been helpful. And seeing as it's been that long, I thought, you know what, let me get into some of the chapters of the book. Today I'm going to get into chapter 13, which is Adventures with My Kitty Bonnie. And I'm going to highlight two specific lessons that I try to teach in that chapter. Now, if you you have never ever watched any of my videos please do note that they are not meant to be financial advice and if you are looking financial advice please speak to somebody who's certified and registered with the fsca so if you don't know who kidiboni is kidiboni is my polo that i used to drive back in 2012 that my sister bridget so generously gifted to me um, I won't get into the story of how <laughs> that kitty body came about, um, but um, I'll tell you a little bit of the reason why I want to specifically speak about this. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was very uh, 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 honored to be emceeing a Renault dealer uh, awards uh, uh, ceremony and it was over two days and the first day that i was driving there was early in the morning and it was raining it was pouring and as i was driving there and i was seeing old men and women you know having to scurry off the road and run off as quickly as they can as they see cars approaching just so that they did not get splashed by the water pools that the cars would drive through. My heart literally broke and it took me back to a couple of years ago when I was in a similar situation. Um, you are having to choose between walking on the road and, 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 and really making sure that when you arrive at work, you still look like your work best or your clothes that you put on in the morning and you still look your best and dignified or having to walk in the grass and having your feet getting wet and collecting grass simply because you don't have a means of transport. I remember having to work at a school where I had to be dropped off on Henrik Potchitter uh, Street or Road in the West Rand and having to walk 800 kilometers to my work um, or to the school where I worked. And as I'm walking, I'm picking up grass. And the one specific afternoon, I remember having to walk back to Henrik Potchitter to take a taxi home and I was getting drenched and I remember stopping and under one arm I was carrying books um, that they, it was a Christian school so they had given us Christian books to read and on the other hand who arm they had given us um, a tree, a lemon tree because I was a new teacher in the school and the lemon tree was supposed to symbolize my journey in the school and I remember with my handbag on dropping everything and stopping in the middle of the road and just crying and calling my mother and saying I can't do this anymore and I just couldn't, guys. I was so emotional. And I was like, I can't. Why has life been so hard on me? I just could not believe what I was going through, you know, and people passing and slowing down. And it felt like they almost wanted to give me a lift, but they, they reconsidered because I was wet. I mean, my panty was wet. And, um, and as I was driving to this Renault uh, uh, event, I just could not stop to think, how we downplay the importance of a car in a country like South Africa, the necessity of it. And I stopped and I was like, I wish more people in this country could have access to cars. And then I realized that, you know, on a daily basis, I get a lot of DMs of young people saying to me, I've bought this car, I need to take it back because I can't pay for it anymore. Or people through the pandemic who said to me, Nicolette, I had Uber cars and I've had to take them back or I couldn't pay for them. And I was like, I just... And, you know, you, you, you get into this conversation with them and you ask them, okay, what are the terms and conditions of your, 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 your car uh, credit agreement? And you realize that they've just bought the car badly. And it breaks my heart. And I'm like, no, 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 no. How did we get here? And I realize that education is such an important part of making financial decisions and making financial purchases especially purchases that are going to be under a credit agreement because if you don't understand how the credit system works, it's going to bite you in the backside and it's not going to be nice. And sometimes because of the lack of education, there is a gate. Gatekeeping happens because we lack information in terms of how to buy a car well. So this video, you may have heard some of the things that I'm going to say in this video, but it is important for me to reiterate these things because I just feel like we need to educate people more on credit agreements and the best way to buy a car and, and i don't want to lie to you the best and most important way to buy a car is firstly getting your mindset right because the problem is that a lot of us buy cars 
for our ego and our status instead of buying a car because it's a necessity. Oh, just before I get into even further, let's just put this argument to bed. Car versus house. You buy what you need at a specific time for your specific financial goals. If you need a car and it is better for you to rent, but a car is going to unlock more financial opportunities for you and you can buy it well, then you buy a car because that's what you need. If you need a house because you're working from home or your job does not demand you to have transport to be able to access opportunities, then that's what you buy. If you've got a family, that's what's important is a roof over their heads. What is the point of buying something you don't need because the world or society says you've got to buy a house before a car? It makes no sense, guys. I'm going to put that on the side because that's not what the conversation is about today. It's about buying well. The first best way to buy a car is buying it cash. I know that not many South Africans are able to do that. So I said because I don't want to start off by making an assertion that the only way to buy a car is through credit. But the best way to buy a car is always going to be cash. It's where you don't owe anybody. And your only obligation is to pay the insurance and, of course, the running costs of the car. But when you do buy a car for using credit, it is important to financially be ready and mindset-wise. So the first, what thing, the first planning that you need to do is to decide what car you want to buy. Buy the car that you need, the car that's going to move you from A to B. Yes, some people... Protection is important. Safety of a car is important. You know, um, so they will buy a car in a different tax bracket or luxury bracket than you. And that is okay. You've got to look at your fundamental is what is the reason why you are buying a car? What is your actual immediate need for a car? I know we want to buy the cars of our dreams, but that's not always possible. In fact, if you delay the gratification of getting the car of your dreams right now, you may be able to buy a car that you don't have to pay so much money out of your pocket that doesn't take a huge chunk of your cash flow or doesn't disturb your cash flow that much, that you may be able to start saving for your dream car. So it's important for you to understand that mindset that is going to start unlocking so many financial futures for yourself. It's also important to understand that most of us, by the time we buy a car, it is at the beginning of our journeys. And so many other things are going to happen, especially if you're buying a car over a credit agreement of four or five years. So many things may happen in four or five years. And one of the biggest things is that your income may not catch up with your lifestyle inflation. So buy a car that is still going to allow you to have a kid if you decide to have a kid, to move cities if you decide to move cities, to change jobs if you want to change jobs. I know of somebody very close to me who bought a car because they worked in the banking sector and in the banking sector, they get a, a, a preferential uh, interest rate. But unfortunately, within three years, the, the environment where she worked became so toxic. But she could not leave because she could not afford the new installment when she leaves the bank. So all of those things are very important for you to keep at the back of your mind. But let's talk a little bit about what is the best way. And I've done a video like this where I say, for the first six months, plan save up the amount of money that you would want to pay every single month for your car. And that is the amount that's going to become a deposit later on. People will then ask, why would you pay a deposit? Well, let me tell you, it is because, here's an example. If you buy a car at 240,000 Rand and you want to finance that car, option one is that you don't pay a deposit. Let's say they give you an interest rate of 13.5% over five years. The total interest that you're going to pay is 91,801 Rand 35. The total amount that you're going to pay at the end of the loan term is 337,000 uh, 337, uh, Rand, right? If you do pay a, a, a deposit of, let's say, 40,000 Rand, it means that you actually finance just 200,000 Rand. Again, with an uh, interest rate of 13.5% over five years, at the end of the loan term, you would have paid in total interest 76,000 Rand. And the total paid at the end of the contract for the whole thing would be 281,000 Rand. There's a huge difference in how much you end up paying if you put down a deposit. I know people say, why put a deposit down? Why can't you put that money into something else? The reality is here you're being charged 13.5% in interest. If you can find an investment that's going to give you 13.5% return back, 
maybe then the opportunity to put that money somewhere else for it to grow is a better option. But in most cases, it is better to pay less overall in terms of your finance deal. So it's important to make sure that you understand what the deposit is. Now, people say, I don't have a chunk. I say, you don't have to have a chunk. You can save up for it by starting to get yourself into a routine. If you want to pay an installment of 5,000 rand, let's say with an extra 1,000 rand for, in, for, for, for insurance, for the next six months, put away 6,000 rand. You're saying you can afford 6,000 rand. Yes, maybe there's issues of, but I still need transport in that month. Then put a half away. That half is the half that you're going to use as your deposit. The second thing is this balloon payment. And it goes hand in hand with this deposit issue because a lot of us are saying, I don't want to put 40,000 rand up front as a deposit. But you know what? Let me take a balloon payment and then have to pay 40,000 rand at the end of the deal. What are the chances that you're going to have 40,000 rand at the end of the deal when throughout you are paying your monthly installment every single month? It is important for you to understand what is a balloon payment. It's a residual payment. It's a payment that is left at the... It's not an only payment. No, it's not an only payment. It's like they freeze the deposit that you should have paid at the beginning or would have paid at the beginning. And they put it at the end. And they calculate your installment based on the amount that you are going to be financing. Right? The 200,000. But the 40,000 rand is also financed. And they want it as a full lump sum at the end. So it's important to remember that a balloon payment only makes it bearable for you to pay throughout the actual contract. But at the end of the contract, the balloon payment comes back to bite you. So be very wary of that. The other thing that a lot of us don't seem to understand is that instead of buying cars we can actually afford at the installment we want to afford it at, we want to increase the interest rate so that you can afford the installment. But unfortunately, that means that overall, you end up paying more money. Got to think about these things. So it's important that when you are going to be buying a car, you don't go in with your status and your ego. You go in with the minimum that you need in a car. Do you need the car to move you from A to B? Do you need safety in the car? Do you need power steering? What are the most important things for you that are very important for you to be able to have a reliable car? I know we advocate for buying second-hand cars. It's okay if you buy a second-hand car that's still in good condition and is still safe for you. Some people will feel better and more protected and more safe if they buy a brand new car from a dealership. That's also okay. At the end of the day, it's about buying well when it comes to the numbers. Remember, the interest rate is going to play a big role. The contract term is going to play a big role. The amount of money you're financing is going to play a big role. And the deposit that you pay or may not pay may be, play a very big role. Then the structure of the deal. If you're adding in a balloon payment, it's going to play a big role. If you're increasing the, the interest rate, it's going to play a big role in how much you end up paying. All of these things are very, very important for you to remember when you are going to finance a car.